Jack FM's Greg Burke in Afghanistan, supporting Oxfordshire's troops. Well, this is it. I'm finally heading to Afghanistan. I'm currently at RF Bryce Norton in Oxfordshire. Now, to be honest, I wasn't too sure what to expect when I got here to Bryce, but it's much like any other airport. Um, the only difference is that everyone here, except for me, is wearing military fatigues. They're all in their desert army gear. There is a, a bit of an atmosphere here too though. The car park outside is full of squaddies uh, kissing their girlfriends goodbyes and boyfriends as well. Um, it must be really, really hard for them knowing they're not going to see uh, their mums, dads, families, brothers, sisters, girlfriends, boyfriends for another six months. Well, after a three hour delay, we're finally on the plane, which to be honest, looks pretty similar to any plane that you might take when you jet off on your holidays, um, except there's RAF crests on the headrest and also uh, the air stewards and stewardesses aren't your normal trolley dollies, they're all actually RAF crew. They're all wearing full flight uniform and there isn't an, another difference as well, it's much quieter than your average flight, no one's really chatting, um, God knows what's going through their heads right now. Oh just one other thing, I'm just walking through where first class would normally be uh, and if you turn left when you come onto the plane there are some quite nice, big, comfy seats where I'm guessing the generals, brigadiers and everybody else who are sitting. Uh, however, there are also three static hospital beds, um, which is quite a sobering thought. And as uh, I must admit, it gave me a little bit of a fright as I turned left. It's been quite busy. Obviously, uh, we've had uh, just a couple of problems leaving Bryce Norton. Uh, we had one of the aircraft with a uh, defensive kit failure, so we had to change aircraft. Uh, regular occurrence, so we've changed over the aircraft, and away we go. Uh, so we've now done about sort of three hours of daylight flying and the rest of the way will all be at night. The squadron at the moment, we work very hard to work everything to time, but then, you know, we're dealing with aircraft which are approaching 30 years old. So unfortunately, things do go wrong with them. And can you tell us a bit about the landing procedure? Well, we can't say much about the approach itself because obviously that's involved in our tactics. But as far as you guys are concerned, down the back, everything, all, all the lights will be switched off. And unfortunately, you'll have to wear flak jackets and helmets uh, for your safety in there. And uh, we basically try and land as expeditiously as we can. We've got guys who are looking out for us on the ground, and we carry a certain amount of defensive kit ourselves. And we uh, just get into theatre as safely as we can. I mean, specifically the, the body armour, I mean, what protection does that afford when we're in the plane? Uh, so we're told that that's going to probably protect you against small arms fire through the aircraft. Now, obviously looking out at the moment, can see absolutely bugger all. Uh, so I imagine you're completely guided by this uh, vast array of uh, gauges and dials in front of us. Yeah, we're basically uh, sort of uh, the main piece of, we've got three navigation uh, kits, if you like, and uh, we're mostly guided now by GPS and uh, that's guiding us and we're also keeping in contact with the ground and radar stations and talking to them via the radios and that's the way we work our way in. Uh, have you guys spent, spent uh, much time in Afghanistan at all? Uh, no we haven't, uh, the way our operation works is that we fly in, you guys get off, we take the new guys on and then we're away as fast as possible. Do you feel that there is adequate support from the public for the, the work that you guys and everyone else who you're transporting right now are doing? Uh, I would say so, certainly now, as it features more in the press, then yes, the, there is increasing support, and obviously the more it's talked about, the more support we tend to get government-wise. I think as well sometimes, um, certainly friends of mine have said, they don't actually see members of the armed forces out in public very often, so um, in terms of giving their support, it can be you know, perhaps quite difficult for them to, to show it in some ways. Jack FM's Greg Burke in Afghanistan in association with Sabre. To find out more about employing members of the Reserve Forces, log on to www.saber.mod.uk.